Welcome back. It's Saturday evening. It's time to talk about the very best comic books that you could buy and read this week. And uh, Drew, you're a little winded. What the hell happened to you? You're not at, you're not at your normal sorts. <laughs> no, I'm tired. It was I had a busy morning, had a busy day. Uh, so our Kyle and I, our parents, they bought a 125 year old home here in Indiana, and we spent our parents and Kyle and I we spent their part of three plus hours this this morning doing demo work demolition work on the house so gutting knocking out with sledgehammers the old kitchen uh, uh, the old kitchen counters the sinks the bathtubs counters cabinets walls everything hauling it all out knocking it all out just and i literally finished all that dropped off kyle <laughs> got here and um catching my wind to talk about great comics this week so yeah <laughs> it's been a busy day kyle government name keel keel government name keel yes absolutely exactly so let's talk about the best comic books. We'll start out with the Indies first. Uh, Ice Cream Man, number 37, W. Maxwell Prince, Martin Morazzo. Me, personally, I thought this was the best comic book of the entire week. It's just really fantastic. It tackles a very, very serious subject where you have a brother and a sister that are left behind after a sibling has committed suicide. That's a hard topic to tackle. And the brother and the sister are add-ons of how they feel about it and what their brother did. But it's interspersed with this comic book that the brother had created but never released, and it's the flight of, like, the fiddly winks or something. I don't even know what they are, but they're really, really cute, and they're going to war, and they got marshmallow guns, and there's a foul-mouthed uh, colonel that's sending them, basically sending them through basic training. And I felt like I was in full metal jacket and stuff like that, so it was really brilliant stuff. I enjoyed so much of it. It was so weird, and it also ties in somewhat to the mythology with the la very last page of the comic book. Yeah, uh, they bring up a certain uh, white-clad character, you know, uh, that sh it's may or may not be the the namesake titled character of the book. But <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, it's it it, it is an, it is very adult subject matter, but it's not the first time they've tackled this subject in this series. And uh, I, it, it, there are some great conversations in this between, like you said, the brother and the sister, because there were there were these three siblings. One was the creator of this comic book series, but the siblings. They don't know why he, the, the creator, their brother, uh, killed himself. They don't know why. They, they've seen, like, he had so much going for him. He had this great series with, with the Fiddlywinks. He was dating a couple women at, at the time. He just, he seemed happy. Everything was great, you know. But it, it really harkens back to something that's very true to life, where, like, the, typically a lot, a lot of times, you know, sometimes, like, the funniest people, the happiest people you think you meet or know are typically under the surface probably the most depressed like case in point famous person is robin williams robin williams you know you would think the, one of the funniest men on the planet but he was actually very severely he, he was suffering from depression and uh maybe there's that that was probably an argument that's going on here you see you see that kind of come out in the comic book series with the fiddly winks how it was a very happy funny series but brought in this intense subject matter with war and like this vietnam out, <laughs> allegory going on with the characters so that's kind of like his depression kind of seeping into the character and uh, yeah, there's some, it's it's a great conversation starter. It's a great, and um, I really do enjoy that. And W. Maxwell Prince is great about that in in the series. And uh, it's just another testament, like how each one, each issue he writes is so different and unique and special that it, you really have to enjoy. You really have to enjoy it for that. It's you never know what you're going to get. And I really do hope uh, people do pick this up and do check this out because Ice Cream Man is truly one of the most original series out right now and one of the best. It's always good, but I thought this one was even better than normal. Another one we definitely have to mention, Code in the Barbarian, number four, Jim Zub, Roberto De La Torre from Titan Comics. And I think a lot of people were nervous that this might have been like the end of a, a mini series, But no, this is an ongoing. This is just the end of the very first story arc. And we have Conan and his band of misfits laying siege to this cult or whatever. And he ends up getting taken under into the deep abyss and there might have been a message given to conan to, to motivate him to keep fighting on and uh, it feels very true to what robert e howard was creating with the character and this it, these are original stories they're not adaptations and it just feels like the best conan comic books you've ever read it feels like a continuation of all of that roberto de la Torre plays a huge part of that so enormously huge success on the first story arc from jim zub nailed it yeah jim jim zub four for four who had thought four issues in a row and Conan, he nailed it and uh, told a great, complete story. Uh, and uh, the art in this, once again, I got to talk about the art in this. The art in this is just beautiful. It is a truly great 
homage and love letter to the Bronze Age Conan art. And uh, I, like I said, I'll say it again. I cannot wait. I hope Titan Comics does produce you know, like a black and white edition of these pages because I want to see the originals of this in their form and because they're, they're absolutely beautiful. And uh, I do love the story in this. And I do love how we see like uh, kind of Conan's kind of shown like the past, how like w- this element, how it's had an effect on man and what it's, what it does to them psychologically. And uh, it may or may not be the end of this element by the end of the series, but we'll see what happens. But uh I thoroughly enjoyed this all the way through. This was such a fun read. If you've never read Conan before, this is a perfect jumping on point. These four issues in Titan books, please do check this out, guys. Uh, Conan is arguably, yeah, you know, like it's just like with Ice Cream Man. It is one of the best series out right now. Do not miss out on this. Another really good indie book this week: Void Rivals Number Five. Robert Kirkman, Mateus Lopes. Certainly, we've gotten some really cool cameos from uh, Transformers and Decepticons in this comic book. We even get a mention of Cybertron in this issue, which I thought was pretty cool. But it definitely feels like it's veering off into what uh, the final act of where this story is going to be. We have the one man that's been taken under prisoner. He ends up getting uh, tortured uh, quite a bit before he's actually Mm -hmm. sprung. And he wants to bring the lady that's also getting in trouble because she saw his face. That's actually a part of that culture with him. And they're like, do you realize who she really is? And you kind of get an idea that maybe she's uh, associated with some type of uh, group of witches or something like that. So there's more than meets the eye with that character. And uh, I just think it's a really good series and they're doing a great job with the story. Yeah. And I do like, we, we brought up, a, I think in an episode or prior that how we, we want to see more of their relationship come out. And we really do see those two, the, the two main players, you know, have their like, kind of like a heart to heart when they're both imprisoned talking to one another. And it, that's great. It's a great element. And like you, we've said before, there are some transformer characters in here. I believe it's the, the Quintessons. Quint, I forget the exact name of the is, but yeah, yeah, they're they're in this, and uh, they have they have a great moment a little later on. It kind of harkens back to the it reminds me of the Transformers, the movie from '85. Um, they're seeking pronouncing judgment on on a character. It's a great moment. Um, yeah, I can't wait to see where it goes. But some, I'm really thinking about the timeline on this. Part of me, part of me is kind of suspecting that this may be like in the far past, not the future. And it's going to be caught up to like the present in the time frame. I think Robert Kirkman may be messing with the time frame on this, maybe playing with us on it, but we'll see what happens. I could be wrong, but uh, yeah, otherwise it's a very fun read. Do check this out guys. We shall see where this all plays into the timeline because we do know things are happening on earth that might not line up with this. Yeah. Now the last one that we're going to recommend, that's an indie comic book team and T Saturday morning adventures. Number six, Eric Burnham, Sarah Meyer on art. Normally, uh, it's a different artist that absolutely looks exactly like the cartoon. This one doesn't look quite as much like the 80s cartoon, but it's still really, really good. And this is Chrome Dome tries to take over the city by running, you know, a, a lawful election. And the, the turtles know that what he's doing is diabolical, and they're trying to get to the bottom of it because the last time that they saw him, they'd actually run over him with a steamroller or whatever. And uh, it's just a really fun story, not the most in-depth, uh, crazy stuff you're ever going to read, but just as far as like a fan of the 80s uh, cartoon, this felt like a, an episode of that, which I believe is exactly what they're going for. And it was just a lot of fun seeing Chrome Dome and some of the characters there. Yeah, you know, like you said, it's just, it's fun. And, you know, and it's very much in the spirit of the animated series from, from the, the 80s. Uh, and I enjoy that. You know, if you get what what's advertised on the cover. And I, I enjoy that for that. It, there's, there's no bait and switch about that. And yeah, it's just, it's a fun, silly story about an election, the Chrome Dome, just, uh, it, it's, I, I don't want to get into it, but it's, it's a very fun, silly story. It's enjoyable. And if you have a kid, they're going to enjoy it as well. If you have a young son, they're, they're going to probably enjoy this as well. And uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy it for that. And it's one of those fun comics where you can just turn your brain off, enjoy it, just rem- reminisce when you're a kid, enjoy it with your son, you know, and I'm sure they can enjoy it as well. Yeah, it, you get you get the turtles from the Saturday morning cartoons, and you can't really ask for more when this one's advertised. I continue to enjoy that series. Let's go over to Marvel. We've got a few uh, Marvel comics before we end on DC. Not a whole lot of great stuff, but I did think Predator versus Wolverine number two, Ben Percy, Andre DeVito on art. Now, there's multiple artists, but it's mostly Andre DeVito who's illustrating the story where they go down to South America, and basically it's a reimagining of the original Predator movie, but with Team X. Instead of obviously with uh, with Dutch and his team going down to South America, I think this is probably what the entire series should have been. Instead of jumping around timelines, they probably could have dealt it 
is just as this and then use the other timelines to tell other stories like Predator versus Wolverine Volume 2 or whatever. And for that, I, I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun and it's good seeing Sabretooth as Jesse the Body of a Jerk. That, you know, it's cool seeing, you know, the three lights showing up on somebody's head and he's trying to talk. And next thing you know, his head explodes and uh, you get some pretty cool stuff and some callbacks to Predator mythology just with the, the, uh, the villains. There's even a line in there where I believe yeah. it's Wolverine that says Alabama he wants to take himself in like an <laughs> Alabama tick. And uh, so it's, it's the fan service that you want in a book like Predator versus Wolverine. Good. Yeah, and yeah, I agree. And I, I personally believe this was much better than issue number one. I enjoyed this so much more. And I had, like I said, I had a lot of fun with this. It, it gives, gives you what you want. You get the blood guts, you get the bodies hanging up, skinned. It's like, I'm surprised Marvel actually did that, uh, which was pretty shocking for me. But uh, yeah, you, you get the action. Wolverine's kicking butt. Um, him and the Predator are going at it. It's great stuff. But yeah, I, I do agree. I wish they would stick to just one time frame keep it simple and stupid focus on one time frame that's all we need all right don't jump around uh but uh and speaking of that at the ending it kind of has me a little leery i'm like i i'm because this is it's a very going to weapon x yes we are and that's one of my favorite harry uh, windsor smith yeah yep it is probably one of my favorite at marvel stories period uh by barry windsor smith and i'm i'm very like i hope they don't tarnish this story by barry i'll be pissed but uh it, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. Uh, but yeah, this was a very fun read, very action packed, and very nostalgic. Carries back to the great Predator film. Uh, yeah, do check this out, guys. If you're also looking for another comic from Marvel recently that had people uh, skinned and strung up, you read uh, Punisher Soviet by Garth Ennis, and that had it in there about two years ago. Oh, man, that was a very fun read. Yeah, Garth, like I said, Garth is the preeminent Punisher writer. Um, yeah, do check that out. Speaking of Garth, we've got Marvel Zombies Black, White, and Blood number one. This is an anthology, but the main event is Garth Enos with Rachel Stott on art. Uh, me, personally, I don't do the black, white, and whatever gimmicky comic books on principle uh, because I think the gimmick is played out. But you like some zombies, you certainly love Halloween, and you love some Garth Enos, and it sounds like you love the comic book. Yeah, and like you, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of a lot of those. I'm not a big fan of the the, the, the color uh, themed books because I mean, Wes, we both know majority of them suck, and majority of those stories suck. You know, there's there's don't get me wrong, I'm not saying they all suck, but there are some stories some stories here and there that are really damn good, but they're few and far between. And uh, this book was a very special one because I was not expecting me myself to enjoy all three stories in this, all three of, in this book were really really good especially the the first one with daredevil were uh, written by uh garth dennis and he's frame it's an un it's the zombified daredevil in a cage fight you know and you get the punisher showing up and it has a gr great story great ending that blew me away it, it, literally and figuratively when you read the story and then uh the second one with spider-man really good his interactions with like the dead and it, i don't want to spoil it and i'm gonna get into it but then the third one as well with moon knight it's so good. It, these stories, they give you exactly what you want. It's exactly how it's advertised. <laughs> Red, white, and blood. It's it just uh, black, white, and blood. It's blood everywhere in this. Guts. It, it, I, I love it. it it's, and it's perfect for, for Halloween time right now as well. I'm a horror connoisseur. This this you know, this know really does satisfy the itch you got if you got a horror itch. Uh, do check this one out, guys. It's one of the better ones in the whole color-schemed books that the publishers are doing. The best one, though, is probably that very first issue of Superman Red, White, and Blue, or whatever it was, oh, with yeah. Daniel Warren Johnson with the story of Pocket and Jonathan yes, Kim when that, he was a little kid. The best story. Uh, it, nothing trumps that. I cried reading that. It was so damn good. Enjoyed it. And I cried reading the John Ridley story after it because it was so damn bad. <laughs> and it's unfortunate <laughs> they were in the same comic book. Yes. <laughs> That's what you get. That's that's the 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 yeah. risk that you take with those books. <laughs> yep, you get, to get, you get to get the good and the bad. You know, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> now, to me, DC Comics had a terrible week. They put out a ton of comic books, and almost none of them were good. Not even really action was good. There's like ten good pages of action comics, and it just like falls apart for some reason. Yes, but there was one comic book that did stand out above the rest. I didn't originally love Green Arrow number five from Josh Williamson, Sean Isaacs. I was going to recommend it. But the more I thought about it, and I actually had a conversation with Jim, the more I did like it. We've got Green Arrow kind of jumping around in time. And this point, he's with old man Ollie, this weird, burnt out, older version of himself that is seeing like his entire family uh, murdered. 
He's had to watch him happen every single time. And Green Arrow's like, how are you still alive? Because I can't imagine me ever letting someone in my family die without dying with them. Like I would have fought to my dying breath as well. He's like, well, you don't understand. You know, you weren't, they weren't there. But there's a really cool twist in this one that I thought worked really, really well. And we have this overarching message. If you ever get the Green Arrow family all back together again, you're going to destroy the world. So somebody is trying to prevent Oliver Queen from getting the team back together, but we don't know why yet. No, we don't know why yet, and I, I really hope it pays it pays off in a good way. You know, that's what I'm really hoping for. Um, and I, I'm going to say right now, I think this is probably one of Josh Williamson's, I think this is some of his best work right now. I, I'll, I'll say his Superman work is okay. It's not great. It's not bad. It's okay. Night Terrors sucked. Uh, Green Arrow has been solid. And granted, it's only been four, five issues five so issues. far. Five issues. It's been solid. And I really enjoyed this issue. And I did enjoy the interactions between the, the old man, Oliver, and uh, uh, young, younger Oliver. Great stuff. And I love uh, just the dialogue was terrific. And I love the, the, uh, the latter half as well. When we get a call back to uh, Kevin Smith's run on Green Arrow and that art and everything. And it's terrific stuff. And the, the ending, the cliffhanger was, was great. This is what I want in a DC comic. It's just, it's fun. It's fast, it's fast paced. It's action packed, great dialogue. This is how you do it right here. Not in action comics, not in DC comics, not in flash this week. This is where it's at. Do not read flash, even though it's no, a horror book. But... You can't, it, I, I, my, I, my eyebrows, I'm like, what? The, I had to read it three times to try to understand what I'm reading here. I'm like, what the hell is this? Doc and I were reviewing it on Monday, so I'm going to have to read it again to see if I can actually understand what's happening. So this is Halloween weekend. That means it's a big weekend for you, Drew. You've been leading up to this and waiting for this moment uh, for a couple months now. Yes, leading up to it. Halloween night, Tuesday night, October 31st. We are launching Unholy Nightmare, number one, brought to you from Aurelia Mazzara and myself. Uh, superhero, Effectively, elevator pitch, superheroes becoming monsters to take down evil monsters. We got the recluse. You got Jenny the Wolf. And they got to take down a, a, this uh, evil uh, evil individual who may have some uh, sinister uh, means uh, going on behind the scenes. I can't. I'm not going to say what. Don't want to spoil the story. But you don't want to miss out on some of the great covers we got coming out. We got. Um, we should be showing some of these right now. Hopefully, uh, two of which we're not going to reveal yet. But uh, you're not going to miss out on the story. We, Aurelio and I have worked our butts off to, sh to present to you an action-packed, ball-to-the-wall horror action sci-fi superhero monster story you do not want to miss out on this guys it is probably the best you're you're, you're uh, out right now check out unholy nightmare tuesday night halloween night and while you're waiting for unholy nightmare to kick off on halloween night i do want to say thank you very much for joining us we've had a lot of fun talking about the very best comic books this week and if you want some more thinking critical i've got more to give in fact i've made like three thousand videos at this point YouTube has looked at what you like to watch and what I like to create and decided this is the best video I ever created in the history of my life, not just for everybody, but just for you. Don't forget to check this one out right now.